The first thing you will need is to download a checkpoint or a LoRa that specializes in pixel art, like this one. But when you generate an image with it, you will see that it has artifacts and that the pixels are not straight. To fix this, we will install this pixel art extension and inside settings, go to post processing and add pixel art. This has some other cool options we will see later, but for now, just enable it and generate again. Now you can see that our image is properly pixelated. And that's basically all you need. However, I really wanted to show you how I used this to make the art for this game, as well as some other cool workflows that could help you even if you're not interested in pixel art. Important things to know, aside from the fact that the extension creates two windows instead of one. First one is that you need to use the checkpoints keywords in your prompt. I'll be using Pixel Mix by Azip, which has the keywords Pixel Art and Pixel World. I will use both. And aside from one more detail, you can use this checkpoint as you would any other. Meaning that you can combine it with Loras like this one to create assets, or this Wakfu Environments one to make more isometric views like this one. You can also use ControlNet with your own models and then Regional Prompter for more specific results like Even though that will be more of a focus when we go to Image to Image where the actual fun begins. For now, I will use Text to Image for two things. A repeatable background and character animations. As base parameters, let's pick DPM++ SDE, 10 sampling steps and a CFG scale of 5 in this case. And make sure to use ClipSkip 2 as well. For the background, I will activate Tile X on my Asymmetric Tiling extension, so that it is able to repeat seamlessly like this one. Then just prompt regularly with a 3 to 1 aspect ratio, making sure that the canvas size is actually divisible by 8. Usually, I'd upscale the result with high res fix, but, and this is the other detail I was talking about, for this model we will not use high res as it may lead to results that don't maintain pixel size, or just no noticeable change at all. If you need to use it, scale always with integer numbers, and use more than 0.7 denoising strength. How much more will depend on each case. Instead, if you want to have more detail in your generations, you can accomplish this using a larger image canvas like 512 instead of 280, and this will be enough to get the results I wanted in this case. Using the pixel art extension, you could also lock the amount of colors used in the image, enabling color and adjusting the palette size slider. This will give you results with more or less color variation. If you do the same but in the grayscale tab, it will, that's right, make you achromatopsic. And with the black and white tab, you can make it perfect for the average Twitter user. The mode I like the most though is the custom color palette. It will let you import an image and extract the colors from it. You can limit how many colors it takes as well. This allows us to maintain a sense of style and atmosphere, or just pick the colors that we want to be used on our generation. Here I'm using color palettes from a site called Lostpack. It's better not to use a detail tweaker Nora when using this option. For the character animation, I used control net sheets with multiple poses, representing different frames of an animation. Made this with Pose My Art by exporting different animation poses and combining them in Photoshop. To create a starting character, I will use an open pose model and a depth model, fairly high on weight, like 0.85 or so. Then prompt for what I want, in this case a blonde woman wearing a pink shirt, blue pants and long hair. For the size, I'm going to use 1024 by 1024. I will use a few more snaps and I will also decrease the CFG scale. Now generate a bunch of images and choose the one that you like the most. I needed different animations though, like instead of the character walking, I wanted it running. So I will import the new depth and open pose maps and I will also use a third control net model with the original character sheet, using reference only add-in plus attention. And I will start this one at 0.15% of steps with a weight of 0.5. This new reference control net model should help us maintain the character a little bit more. And remember to import the image as a custom color palette, making it easier to get the right colors. Then it's just a matter of dividing the frames to make the animation. I will do this in Photoshop manually until I have something like this. This is pretty cool when I show it on the video, however, it comes with bad news. For one, the chances that the image follows your prompt are super small, and grow even smaller the more complex your prompt is. And even if it does follow it, the results will need tons of manual fixing most of the time. We also need to use very high depth control net values so that the character doesn't step twice with the same leg. This kind of forces us into very humanoid and simple characters. 
Good news are that I haven't really experimented much with this, so you can go for it if you want. I'll leave the control and references in the description. I guess you could always try your luck by inpainting individual frames, trying to correct them. Which, by the way, it's probably better if you always use whole picture when inpainting with this model to not mess up the pixel size or other stuff. And talking about inpainting, the real fun starts with image to image. So let not yet, you need to pay the thanks to Darkstorm Tax first. <laughs> who made this video possible by providing a guide on his method on how to make pixel art. He also had the patience to explain stuff to me and helped a lot while we experimented for this video. Not the first time I say this on this channel, but thank you very much. I will leave his Twitter in the description. He makes very cool stuff and knows a lot of things. We will use a base image, like a rough drawing, as an input. And then we pass it through image to image to get a more detailed version. As a first example, I'll use Darkstorm's drawing, because I think it's cool. For the basic parameters, I will use the same ones as in text to image. We will use a pretty big canvas size, and then prompt for what you want. Before we generate though, you need to know how much of the original image you want to keep. If you don't really mind losing most of it, then just generate with a denoising strength from 0.55 to 1. The more you want to keep from the original image while adding details to it, the harder it gets. But that's why we have different workflows and tips. Starting with the simpler version, we will use one denoising strength and activate control net tile with balanced mode. This is way better at keeping the original image, and if you don't want to keep as much of it, just lower its weight. This is where things like a detailed weaker LoRa start having more of a role. Another cool trick you can use is playing with the CFG scale. As you use higher values, the image will change more, but it will also have more colors, saturation and contrast. For now, we should fix the fact that the colors are changing too much from the original input. You will go to Settings, Show All Settings, and scroll down to the Quick Settings list. Here, add Image to Image Color Correction. Now apply the changes and restart the UI. When you're going to generate, check this box right here. And now, all your generations should be more similar in color to your original image. And if not, you can try to also use the image as a color palette. And with this, you get the base idea. All of the next approaches follow the principle of having an input and then using a combination of control net models, denoising strength, CFG and prompting to get the desired result. There are unlimited possible combinations of this, so I'm sure you will find one that works best for you. For example, in the tile control net model you could put the weight at 1 and then use my prompt is more important as the mode. Now lower the denoising strength to 0.65 or so and that's it. We will just show you the ones that we found to be the most reliable and that we liked best, but it is not a strict rule to follow. Applying this idea, we could generate stuff like single assets based on a quick sketch. Here I'm just using InPaint Sketch directly, but you could also work on a drawing more precisely, like Darkstorm is doing here, by going back and forth and fixing minor stuff. Or even multiple assets at once, by drawing a bunch of shapes in one single image. However, if you do this, you need to be aware of some things. A very important key is to keep all the assets that share a material in the same image, or at the very least, pack them together. If you have spikes and chainsaws, put them together. If you want to create wooden assets, put those together too. You do this to avoid having your prompt affect assets it shouldn't, like the coin turning into fire here. If you want, you can use regional prompter, but I'd just rather make more images. Once you have sketched your assets, input the image. I drew this on a 512 by 512 canvas, but I will generate an image of 1024 by 1024. Now prompt for what you want in the image, plus some keywords, like pixel art, assets, so and all of that. Adding the details Laura will help too. I personally keep the negative prompt very simple, mainly using it to avoid characters. This is the part that I have explored less, so you do you here. And next, the other important part, control net and XYZ. I will use two control net models. The first one will be a tile model set to balanced with 0.7 weight and 0.4 ending step. And the other model will actually be a tile model again. This time set to 0.4 weight, 0.2 starting step and 0.6 ending step. This is a setup that, while not the best, it should work with mostly anything. Just play around a bit with the parameters and that's it. Other and better methods were just good for one type of images with one style of prompts. That's why I tell you to experiment on your own, because there are better methods out there. This just could work well for everyone, which is what you want in a video. Now I will create an XYZ plot for two purposes. The first is to show you how certain parameters affect the image. 
and the second one will be to have a lot of different generations, so I can pick the best parts of each one. One of the axes will be for CFG scale, and the other one for the noising strength. You could also take out the apply color correction here, to test new colors. Once it's done generating, we will have a lot of different options. If you find one that you like, but think it needs a little bit more juice, you can re-import it as an input and generate again. I would suggest maybe taking one of the controller models out, and then leaving the other one as something like 0.6 weight and 0.6 ending step. There you go, lots of variation with cool spiky things. Works for wooden assets too, and it even works for environment sprites like these. The only thing you would need to do here is to plan well how and where you paint your sketch, in a way that it matches the size for your tiles. It's easier if you do this directly in a small canvas and then resize it for stable diffusion. Also, remember not to add a lot of different stuff into one drawing. Maximum I'd recommend is to add some background colors, a big ground plane with every possible corner, and maybe some platforms and decorations. And now we just do the same we did with our assets. Prompt for what you want and generate with a blot. Or not, I guess. If you need more contrast, you can re-input again and generate. But keep in mind that as you do this, the color will get more and more messed up. After you mix the results you want, just erase the background, clean stuff up and maybe make things style a little better. With this, you're free to input the image as a sprite sheet on Unity to create your game worlds. To be honest, I haven't tried isometric or other styles much, but I think this workflow should work for that too, or at the very least give a good base to start from, both for text to image with a character sheet or other stuff, and image to image with your own inputs. Remember that all of this is just one of infinite possible workflows, even though all of them will require some manual tweaking and fixing. Thanks to Darkstorm again, join our Discord, I hope this was helpful, see ya!